Here's the cam before the Spintron test. It's an early 750 cam in good condition and it's been cleaned up to get rid of any polish marks. That way any new polish marks will just be from the Spintron test. After about an hour at 1500 RPM we're not seeing any wear on the opening flank but you can see stress and polish on the cam nose. Not much on the closing flank. We've got a little bit of a line here but you can see the beginnings of wear on the nose of the cam at full lift. This is caused by spring pressure at low RPM. Here's the lifter before the Spintron test. As you can see, we've got a nice polished surface. Now we're looking at the lifter after an hour at 1500 RPM you can see that there's a definite wear line forming across the middle of the lifter. This wear line is caused by the spring pressure at full lift at low RPM. Here's a BSA lifter that's been ground flat for this demonstration. But you can't use a BSA lifter that's been ground flat because the cam will hit the edge of the lifter and damage the cam lobe. But it's good for demonstration purposes. It's the radius of the BSA lifter that keeps the edge of the lifter from hitting the cam lobe. See right there? It doesn't hit the edge. The only time the cam lobe touches the center of the lifter is at peak lift. This is where the valve spring pressure is the highest and it's where most of the cam lobe wear occurs. In racing, if the RPM is high enough, the lifter will accelerate up the flank and its momentum will cause it to fly all the way off the tip and come back down on the descending flank. On the heel of the lobe, there's tappet clearance and no pressure. If the lifter flies off the tip and you have loft, this actually creates more power, but you don't want the valve bounce at the bottom. At extreme racing RPM, if the valve spring loses control, the lifter will descend so rapidly that when it comes to an abrupt stop, it can bounce, sometimes two or three times. This is dangerous. It can cause valve hookup and destruction. The ideal situation is a lightweight valve spring that has enough pressure to prevent valve bounce on the seat at high RPM, but not so much pressure that it causes wear on the nose of the cam at low RPM. This is where the JSB hive spring comes into play. Notice that the upper portion of the valve spring has a generous taper. This taper helps prevent unwanted harmonic frequencies. It also allows the use of a small diameter titanium retainer. This is a radius BSC lifter with a cam that's designed for a radius lifter you can see that the cam lobe has a much broader and rounded nose. This means that there's going to be less wear than there would be for a cam with a pointy nose and a flat lifter. The well used BSA lifter. You can still see a center line, but generally speaking, it's not as deep as you would see with a flat lifter. This is a JS racing cam with a smooth ramp. So when the lifter descends, it comes down more gently to eliminate valve balance. Oil supplied to the crankshaft comes flying out the sides of the connecting rod. One side of the rod misses the cam lobes completely. The other side only manages to hit the exhaust lobe, indicated by the wire. At high RPM, oil is flying everywhere, but at low RPM, Stock Norton lifters have a chamfer on the front edge of the lifter. This directs oil between the cam lobes. Some of it gets on the cam lobes, but not all of it. This problem is solved by converting to BSA lifters with bronze blocks and oil drain holes that drain directly onto the center of the cam lobe as it spins counterclockwise into the lifter.